Hello and welcome everyone to this first match of our second half today. Um, I'm Ravy here with Lazarus Tellraven, and we are going to bring you this match between Dead Terrorists and Gorgon Empire. We have two fascinating setups. Neither of these setups are like anything that's been brought before in this tournament. Um, the Gorgon Empire team has brought our first pure bomber team at the tournament with two rapiers, a claymore, and a neros, and then a whole bunch of bombers and a vigil for damps or for. Uh, Target painters. Uh, Laz, why don't you tell us a bit about the uh, Dead Terrorists team? Yeah, Dead Terrorists get four mm -hmm. Typhoon fleet, uh, or fleet Typhoons, and it's really weird to bring such an expensive ship whenever both these teams are already knocked out of, of the, uh, this time. Um, but they got the Vigils for Target Painters. Um, but the real big thing you're going to see is you're going to see the sensor dampeners from these frigates just take yeah. these uh, lower the They're distance. just going to get knocked right yeah. out by those. Um, my money's definitely on Gorgon knowing the setups now. Um, the match is just starting. It's worth noting yeah. that uh, <laughs> the Typhoons are using cruise missiles. Both these teams warped it at max range and are trying to kite. And the Typhoons are moving away at hot, at, as fast as they can um, yep. and trying to kite a kiting team. So this is going to be uh, interesting to see how it turns out. We're seeing some cruise missiles hitting, and we're seeing bombs in the air. We do have bombs in the air from uh, the Gorgon Empire team going after the bouncers. The Gorgon Empire team has wow. bombed themselves. <laughs> Gorgon Empire has bombed their own team. Wow. They Two dropped bombers the bombs, down. Two bombers out. Dropped the bombs and then MWD right <laughs> into it. Wiping out two of their bombers, doing damage to the others. That is an impressive, impressive move. I think that's the first time we've seen people bomb themselves in a while. Well, we're not seeing any damps really being affected on the uh, fleet typhoons at the moment. No. I mean, and you would expect that these um, armor tank bombers would use their mids for damps or, tar or uh, tracking Something. disruptors, maybe. But there's no E war. We're seeing, oh, they're already seeing some damps now. Well, but at the very why were they not applied before? At the very beginning, they had three of the typhoons dampened, mm -hmm. and then they lost those two bombers, and then all the damps fell off. I'm now, the Gorgon Empire rapier is in t a tiny amount of structure. He's getting armor pulled back by the Aneros. These cruise missiles hitting him aren't going to be doing great damage against him, especially because the wrong rapier is being target painted by the dead terrorist team. This is a bit yep. of a... Uh, the rapier did just go down, however. Yes. Boundary violation, actually. Yeah, the that rapier... Or the Vigil has been disqualified vigil, yeah. for boundary violation for dead terrorists. Um, both of these teams managing to mess up a lot of things here. I think they're really trying to compete with Test. With the, yeah, see uh, who can mess up the most. Yeah, who, who can lose if the If dead terrorists can fly all four of their fleet typhoons out of the arena, they will have passed Test uh, yeah. for knocking ships out, and they would be impressive ships to do it with, too. Well, I mean, they, they, they have stiff competition. Gorgon Empire did bomb themselves at the beginning of the match. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty impressive amount of fail. Um, now, Gorgon Empire's second rapier, the one that actually was... Nope, now they're switching the painter once again to the ship they're not primary and switching the painter to the Aneros. Um, this vigil for dead terrorists <laughs> seems to uh, be, be a little premature. He's probably a, yeah, <laughs> probably a spy for Gorgon Empire, that would be my explanation for it. Um, but uh, they're doing some damage and just lost their first typhoon. <laughs> These bombers are going to be doing full damage to the fleet typhoons, mm -hmm. but the fleet typhoons on the other hand are not going to be doing full damage to the bombers. So yeah. if the bombers had managed to get damps across the typhoons and not bomb themselves, mm -hmm. I think they would have been in a great place. Uh, yeah, that being said, at this point, it could go in either way. Yeah, the small stick radius of these bombers aren't going to be taking full damage, like you said, from these missiles. And then with them, the way they've been switching their target painters when the rapier is almost dead, and now they're he's fully right back up. I mean, yeah. they, they are going after the Aneros. The Aneros. Right so it looks like he is going to go down eventually. Um, it's going to take a while, though. The Aneros' small signature radius and the fact that he's not webbed means that those cruise missiles are not doing anywhere near their full damage. Um, yeah. At this point, the only reason I really think this fight can go either way is it's always really hard to predict terribleness. Um, <laughs> anyone here can mess up in a creative way. Generally, good teams are fairly predictable. Dead Terrorists have usually been a good team, but this is I don't really feel like they're trying in this match. Well, I mean, the Rapier does get target painting bonus. So, I mean, th if they would have gotten that Rapier down, I mean, they could have lowered their SIG a little bit, but they are a battleship ship a whole. So that being mean, said, none of them are being target painted right, right. now either. Well, this is <laughs> hand, hands in the air crazy. Um, so the Dead Terrace, props to them for bringing a comedy setup with fairly expensive <laughs> ships, at least. Um, oh, there we see the target painter landing on uh, Mini Indestruct Instruction, who's going to be going down in a second. He's Instructor? M maybe the but he's outrunning the missiles, it looks like. He's got just out of their range, <laughs> and they're not quite reaching him. They're just giving up. Yeah, there he is. He is not getting hit by these missiles. So he's managed to outrange the bombers, and he should still be doing some damage with his crew. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he, he definitely overheated that micro grab to get up to that speed, and then he's starting to slow back down again. So. Now, the bombers are faster than these Typhoons if they really want well, Yes, if they really want to be. Right. The Hound is going like 2k a second. Um, it's just a mistake on the part of the bombers to allow mm -hmm. these fleet Typhoons to get range on them. The bombers really should be able to be dictating that range, as we see a Rapier going down very quickly. It's really surprising that we're not seeing more E-War effects as the rapier, uh, last Rapier does die for Gorgon Empire. 
but they're, you're not seeing the damps like we thought we would see. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe the two bomb or bombers that they lost at the beginning from their own bombs had all their damps fitted or it's something. It's possible some of these bombers may be letting themselves get out of lock range, but again, with the speed that they have, they really have no excuse for that. Yeah. Um, the Loki and the Typhoons are fast ships, but bombers are just faster. So it's uh, really just down to piloting, I think, at this point. And as we see a Hound go down, it looks like Dead Terrace, unless they fly to the arena, is going to be taking this match. Um, that being said, we've already I think, mentioned it, but neither of these teams can go through. I'm now that I think of it, I'm not sure if we did specifically mention Chip, it. we did. I but mentioned neither it Okay, awesome. Yep. Neither of these teams can <laughs> go through in this. This is the two teams that are already knocked out from this round. So they're not really um, desperate to get a win by any means. They're just here to have some fun, put on a good show, and I, bombing yourself is definitely a way to be remembered. In yeah, tournament. I mean, I think that might... Well, no, with past tournaments, we've seen it a couple times, mm -hmm. but... But so far, the first it's bomber It's not the kind of thing people for, will forget. Yeah. Gorgon Empire <laughs> bombed themselves. <laughs> but they, like I said, they have the speed to keep up with these Typhoons. I mean, they get to play more bonuses. And yeah. It's we see two bombers dropping very rapidly for Gorgon Empire. Um, it's just a matter of time now. These Typhoons are managing to just not get hit. They're going fast enough. They're going very, very fast, mm -hmm. actually. Wow. These are like nano right up. 3K. Um, these, uh, they're going fast enough that these missiles are going to have a very hard time hitting them. And if they stay towards the edge of the range, the missiles will spend so much time chasing them that they just won't make it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. These are like, <laughs> this, look at that, going 3K. <laughs> this, these are old school <laughs> nano foons from back in the old days. Yeah, uh, that, it's extremely fast for battleship. I mean, I don't think uh, the materials, I think, might be able to get like close to that, but... Well, Maker can get faster, but still, that's, like, the fact... And they're doing it with cruise missiles, which they don't have to worry about tracking, mm -hmm. they've got great range. It's a fun setup. This must be a blast to fly on their part. So yeah. that's... Uh, and it's going to do the job for them. They're going to be uh, taking down Gorgon unless they fly out of the arena at this point. Yep, we're getting down to about four minutes left in the match. The uh, Gorgon Empire really should have won this match. They had a lot of really bad mistakes. Yeah. But. Gorgon Empire, while they could have these Typhoons webbed, were doing enough damage to bring them down quickly. Mm -hmm. um, their own ships weren't taking damage very fast. They really, it was in their ballpark. If they wanted mm -hmm. to win, they could have. But, uh, well, if they wanted to uh, to be more careful with their bombs, they could have <laughs> right. won. Um, but in the end of the day, they're just here to have fun and put on a show. And so uh, we'll see both of these two teams, hopefully in future tournaments. Dead Terrace don't have a lot of people left, but they are essentially a tournament mm -hmm. team at this point. Yeah, I think, I think at this point they're just trying to fluster us with the bombs. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as we're down to two ships left for Gorgon Empire, Claymore and Vigil, which Vigil's in deep structure, next volley will be finishing it off. Um, and there it goes. Cl only Claymore left. Yep. And that Claymore will go down pretty fast. He'll take full damage from the uh, missiles, and uh, we'll see him uh, disappearing soon. And that'll be uh, Dead Terrace down. Um, so this is this first group in this uh, second half of the day has already been decided. Right. Uh, Dead Terrace and Gorgon are both out. Exodus and Heritage Nation, who we're going to be seeing next, are both mm -hmm. in. Uh, but these teams are still going to, I think, be trying to do something interesting, at least. And oh, yeah. this is nothing if not interesting. They'll all, all be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm like when they, we first saw these two teams, I just I already gave the Magic Organ Empire, and then this happened. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's uh, actually I, I really am impressed with uh, how little damage these uh, dead terrorist fleet typhoons are taking. If they'd managed to uh, uh, get webs off of Joder and Mini Inst Instructicon uh, right. earlier, then they could have picked up the speed and just become invulnerable to the missiles. And I'm sure that was the kind of plan they're hoping to be able to kite. It's like a um, a kiting Tengu team, but uh, to the nth level. It's right. the next step to that. And it's an interesting idea, but uh, very vulnerable to E-War, very vulnerable to damps if the damps had been properly applied. Right. Well, then, just the, how much, how long would they be able to run those MWDs? I mean, they, they had to be cap boosted, but on that reload cycle of that capacitor, I mean, they're not going to be able to kite with those MWDs. It'll probably last a while. But anyways, we do now have Dead Terrace getting the full 100 points. Uh, congratulations to them. They're going to go out of this tournament on a bit of a high note, and uh, hopefully we'll see both these teams next year. We'll pass you back now to Soundwave and Studio.